Hi everyone, welcome again. Uh, week four's lecture and I uh, hope you're doing well and I'm um, looking forward to spending a brief time together today. We've only got two chapters, so I, I think our lecture will be much shorter than usual. And um, I hope that you have, as always, printed out your learning objectives and uh, able to fill in um, some notes here. And um, so with that, let me go ahead and uh, say a quick prayer and we'll go ahead and begin. Heavenly Father, thank you again for our time. Thank you for the students. Can pray your continued blessing upon them. Uh, pray for our time together. Uh, pray for their time this week as they spend working um, on this material. Pray that you would uh, open their hearts and their minds to, uh, to be able to understand uh, the information, um, be able to accomplish it on time, and be able to, um, to enjoy it as well. I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at um, chapters 10 and chapters 11, um, which I think is, uh, I, I love these two chapters because there is so much, I believe, that is, uh, is relevant to, in all reality, today's world. Um, chapter 10 has to do with European Christendom and uh, basically Christianity in the West. And then also uh, chapter 11 will look at the rise of Islam. And, um, and uh, this is obviously, this is a current day conflict. And so this will give you kind of the history of the two and um, hopefully, hopefully give you some explanation. So a couple things I want you to look at um, for your learning objectives in chapter 10 as you're reading. Um, I want you to be able to compare the diverse legacies of Rome in the West and uh, Byzantium in the East. Um, Strayer will, will do a very nice job of kind of comparing the two. Um, sometimes when I talk about, uh, or when historians, I should say, talk about the Western world, um, that includes both the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire. Um, there's actually a split between the two. Um, as early as the 300s, that spreads all the way up until the eight, 900s, and then even there's an official split in 1050, uh, 1054, exactly. And um, uh, the churches, the Christian church that comes out of the Eastern Empire and the Western Empire are very different. Um, and uh, so you will be able to um, look at the diverse legacies between those two. Um, by the end of, of your reading of chapter 10. And then the other thing that you're going to be able to look at is I want you to be able to explore medieval European expansion. Okay, again, um, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this, this time period looks from 500 AD through 1300 AD, which is, um, the low middle ages, the high middle ages, and then leading up right on to kind of the cusp of the Renaissance in the 1300s. Um, so we're going to look at uh, the old Roman Empire, how it, um, how it rose and how it fell, and you'll look at how the empire, um, which it's not even really an empire during this time, but how this area grew and developed. So. Those are the two uh, major learning objectives for chapter 10. Okay, and these are the, again, these are the two emphases that, uh, that Strayer will focus on. Eastern Christendom, which is the Eastern Roman Empire. You can see on this map here, um, it's roughly where uh, the, the Byzantine Empire is, even though it's at certain periods it's, it's much larger than that. Um, and then Western Christendom, rebuilding in the wake of Roman collapse. The Roman Empire obviously um, kind of starts in Italy, in Rome, um, but then spreads all the way up into um, England, Scotland, Ireland, through France, um, up into kind of some of the, um, the Baltic states. And uh, so you will explore uh, the two different sides of um, of Christendom, and um, 
as you're as you're reading i want you to pay very careful attention if you will to strayer's perspective um as he is writing and whether he writes favorably uh, and you can do a lot of this in comparing and contrasting with chapter 10 and chapter 11 but i want you to pay attention to the perspective that he takes on christianity um whether or not he uh, writes that it was beneficial um, and how much time and uh, kind of effort he gives to uh, to this particular chapter and then I also want you to focus on how um, kind of the legacy of Western and, and by that I mean the Western world it's uh, legacy the, the legacy that Christianity left um, uh, in, uh, in the world, um, are there similarities in Europe today? Um, and if not, I mean, if so, what are they? If not, how did they change? And, um, so just, again, a lot of things for you to keep in mind as you're going through your reading. And, uh, with that, let's turn now and look at chapter 11. All right, chapter 11 looks specifically at the rise of Islam, um, not only as a faith, but also as an empire um, between the years 600 and 1500. Um, for learning objectives, there's two major things that, um, that I'd like for you to pay attention to. The first one is um, why I want you to be able to examine the causes behind the spread of Islam. Um, why did it begin and what were the causes for its spread throughout the world? And then the other thing that I want you to pay attention to, again, because of its specific relativism to today's world, is I want you to be able to consider the religious divisions within Islam and how they affected political development. Uh, what's the difference between a Sunni Muslim and a Shiite Muslim? What role does uh, Sufi uh, Islam have to play? So those are uh, two things that I want you to, uh, to focus on. And then here is kind of just a real, obviously, brief outline of what um, Strayer is going to focus on. Um, he will spend a great deal of time talking about uh, the new religion, um, give you the full story of, uh, of Muhammad, of the growth of, um, of Islam, kind of throughout the Fertile Crescent. And then um, he will explore how, how Islam uh, takes over this entire area, um, some of their conquest and the reasons why. And then um, he will explore how the kind of the Arab empire was able to develop culture and, um, and be able to um, spread that as well. So again, in reading these two chapters, I want you to focus on the perspective that Strayer takes, um, the perspective from which he writes, and um, uh, see whether you agree with him or whether you don't. And... Uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me and uh, just be aware of be aware again of his perspective so with that go ahead and um, enjoy your reading this week and um, we'll see you next week for our final one uh, week five god bless